The new normal, my friends, is a forward, progressive process of becoming who God created us to be and do. You is the church. I pray we change our narrative. We don't go to church. We are the church. Don't think that I'll be committed when everything goes back to whatever. No. Yeah. It's, now it's now in the private. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the private being committed to the Word of God, to community right now, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Jesus said there's going to come a time where things are going to get so bad that some people are going to lose their faith. And he says, the faith of many will grow cold. And he says, I pray that you are able to withstand the test of times so you can be faithful till the end. My friends, we need to go deeper in our roots and be grounded so we're not easily persuaded by the enemy to give up the faith, to give up our marriages, to give up our kids, to give up our purpose. You know, we, we get these comfort bubbles that we live in. And we, we try to just say, yeah, no, I'll do everything the Lord says within this little comfort bubble. And then all we ever ex experience is this comfortable thing, this comfortable life. But we don't ever step out of that bubble and live in obedience and faith. And you know what happens when, that, when we don't do that? We never experience the power and the miracles that God has waiting for us. You know, what a fear I have of going and standing before the Lord one day and saying, look at all that you missed. Look at all that you missed. I had all this for you. I don't believe that the goal is to attain information only. I believe the goal is to attain information that leads to transformation. We don't need more information in our world. What we need is application of the information. But if all we do is come and attain information, who is going to take this thing to the ends of the world? So the goal is not just to come here and say, hey, look, I got more information on the book of Acts. I see what Paul did. The goal is to say, man, that's the information that's going to lead now to me applying this thing so that I can also push the narrative forward and the movement forward because it's my turn. Can you say it? It's my turn. My turn. No, no, say it like, like you mean it, like it's my turn. It's my turn. As we come together as the army of God, these two things happen in the ascension. Number one, is prayer and number two is praise because it is a weapon of war we declare who God is see as we're declaring who God is God is speaking over us it's it's not just a one-way action it's an interaction prayer is a powerful tool against the devil he has no weapon that he can form against you when you begin to pray and you could feel just so helpless the father saw that he reached way down and said, here's my son. Your daddy's going to give you a redeemer. And you know what he's going to do through the power of the Holy Spirit? He's going to bring you back to me. And he's going to carry you across the finish line. If you don't know this redeemer, his name is Jesus, the Messiah, the lover of your soul, the Prince of Peace. He knows what you've been and what you've done. He knows all about your disability, all the ways that sin has broken you. And you know what? He loves you. This is what God put in our hearts seven years ago, that we would be a church that will always be concerned about the church. I never, my friends, this is personal. I never want this church to become about just itself. I want to go to church where people are always getting saved, always coming in, always learning, always growing, so that there's always more people that need to be reached for the gospel.